few months ago, we released an episode all about AI art creation through Midjourney. It's a mind blowing process where you feed this system a prompt and then the AI creates a completely original piece of art for you to use. And we showed how that could be great for idea starters, concept art, and so on. At the time, Midjourney was invite only and really hard to get into, but now it's open for anyone to join. So we thought it'd be a great time to see if we could implement our works that we created in Midjourney into our VFX workflow, which we did with this shot. And this shot is a recreation, or at least a recreation of the vibe of this shot from Netflix's new show, Sandman. And one of the things Midjourney does pretty well is creating environments. And that's what we used for this shot here. And again, we do have a full episode on Midjourney and how it works. So check that out in the links below if you want to dive deeper. But essentially, we're just going to enter words as prompts to generate the AI art we are looking for. So we'll start by typing forward slash imagine and then choose some words that feel like they best describe our scene like fantasy church interior, stained glass windows, volumetric, haze, cinematic lighting. And then we're going to finish that up with dash dash AR space 16 colon nine. And that'll give us our aspect ratio. And now mid journey will generate the art and give us four options. And we can see that it's not really what we're looking for in this instance. So we'll try some other options until we get what we want. The thing with AI art is figuring out what to add or change in our prompts until we get something that's closer to what we're looking for. Sometimes you get a great result in the first try and other times like this, we are searching for a specific look and it can take a good amount of trial and error. We did start to get something with a similar vibe like this one. So we can upscale by clicking here to use it or iterate off this specific image right here or in the initial prompt by clicking one of the buttons along the bottom row. Eventually we were able to get this, which is pretty symmetrical, has a nice distance from the structure and has a similar color palette to our Sandman reference. So we'll save it by upscaling, then opening the original. But now we're going to take that image over into After Effects. And in here, we're going to create a new comp and drop in our background. Midjourney's current 16.9 image is just under 1920 by 1080, so we can scale it up to fit. And if you want to go a step further, you could take this image into software like Gigapixel, which uses AI to scale the image, and it does an amazing job of it. For our actor's footage, we shot Justin on green screen first as a wide shot for the main comp using a backlight to replicate the angle of light coming from the window in our background plate, as well as a light from below, almost like a bounce light from the cathedral floor. We also used a wind machine to add some movement in there. Now we'll drop this footage into our comp and use the pen tool to draw a basic mask around him and Feather. And since he raises his arms throughout the shot, we'll keyframe and animate the mask to follow. Next, we'll toss on key light effect to key him out. Because it's a wide shot and he's going to be scaled down pretty small, this can be a very simple key. Then we'll also add an advanced spill suppressor to kill any green spill. Now we're going to scale down and place him where we want in our scene and use a curves effect to match contrast and color closer to the background layer. If you want to add a shadow, you can first duplicate your actor and on the lower layer, use this tool to move the actor's point to the feet, then scale vertically to however long you want the shadow to be. Next, add a tint effect with the map white set to black, then a fast box blur for however soft you want the shadow. Now lower the layer opacity and duplicate again. This time masking a section closer to the actor, then set to intersect and boost this feather. We'll duplicate one last time, moving the intersect mask closer to the feet and increasing the layer opacity to make this section darker. Next, create a new adjustment layer at the top of the comp and add a glow effect. We're using Red Giant's optical glow with a boosted size and lowered fall off to get a hazy look, but with a really low amount to keep it subtle. Then we can use a duplicate place below Justin's layer, masking and feathering the lower, darker area behind him to help add some visual separation, similar to the actual Sandman shot. Next up, we handle some floating rocks, but before we do, let's thank today's sponsor. I love movies a lot. And if you look on my letterbox, you'll see I've watched more movies this year than we've had days because I love movies. And if you're watching this, I bet you do too. So the world of streaming services has been a godsend for a healthy diet of movies. Problem is they don't always have what I'm looking for, or I make my way through their library and then I get bored. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. NordVPN is the best way to protect your info on the internet, of course. And you could jump in now and get a two year plan at a big discount plus four months free when you go to nordvpn.com forward slash film riot. But while protecting my personal info is the most important use, that's out of sight, out of mind. I turn it on, it selects a server for me and it does its thing. I don't have to think about it. The main conscious way I use NordVPN is for those sweet, sweet movies. 
Let me explain. Say I'm on Disney Plus, can't find anything I wanna watch. If I switch over to another server, say Australia, it's like getting an entirely new streaming service. In this region, you are getting Star, which comes with an insane amount of great movies like Prey, Nightmare Alley, The Shape of Water, Prometheus, I could keep going. Of course, Prey is on Hulu, but Hulu is also a US only streamer. So if you're outside the US, you can't get Hulu unless, yes, NordVPN. So jump on there, switch over to the US, and then you can watch one of my current favorite shows. They're great. The point is you can protect your data and get more movies. So jump to the description below or go to nordvpn.com slash film riot to get a two year plan at a big discount and those four months free. And you also get a 30 day money back guarantee. So you get more movies for a month and can cancel if you want. It's a win win. Logo. For the floating rocks and debris, we'll be using Element 3D, but a free way to do it could be by following a similar method we used for these floating chunks of building in our Doctor Strange tutorial. For that, we use the built-in shatter effect, but because we want more control, depth, and rotation, we're gonna be using 3D models instead. So now create a solid and apply element 3D. Inside, we're gonna go to the starter pack physical, which includes these ball fracture and floor fracture models, which are pre-fractured into different chunks that we can separate and spread out. We can also add rock models to it if we'd like. Drop the rock material over the group folder to apply it to every model, and in the diffuse, we'll lower lower the brightness, contrast, and saturation, since we want them to be pretty dark in our scene. Now exit element and in group one drop down under particle replicator, change the replicator shape to plane and increase both the particle count and shape scale values. In the scale drop down, we can alter these further to cover the area of the scene that we want. Now to separate the fractures, go into particle look and multi object and check the enable box. We want the pieces to be smaller, so we'll change the size, size range random and particle size, and we'll just adjust this to taste. Now under rotation, increase the rotation random and set a keyframe. We want a lot of variety, so we'll just go through and alter the displace, the random, scatter multi, increase the noise amount, and set a keyframe. To have them levitate over time, we're also gonna set keyframes for the Y displace, Y scatter, and X and Y position in the particle replicator. With that done, we'll move to the end of the timeline and change these keyframed values so they both have the pieces float up Upward, as well as changing individual positions via the noise. And we're having a turn with the rotation random giving us this. Next, we're gonna create a new camera and make it 28 millimeter, then change the position and rotation to align better with our scene. We'll also add a point light with a brightness around 400. We'll push it far back until the elements are backlit from a similar direction to our background light source. To comp these rocks into our scene better, first we're gonna duplicate the background layer and move it below our rocks layer, then disable visibility. And in elements custom layer selection, select this background as a texture map. Now we'll jump back into Element and change the environment to use this background layer instead. Now go back into After Effects and in Element Render, enable ambient occlusion and boost the intensity, then enable fog. For the color, we can sample a part of the background, then change opacity, fog distance, and range to control how much of our element scene is affected. Then we'll use a curves effect to closer match the color to our scene by lowering the reds and boosting the blues. But you can see some areas feel too dark, especially around the bright sections in the center, while other parts feel too light, especially around the edges of the frame where our background is darker, almost like a vignette. To balance this, we're gonna select the light, camera, rocks, and background duplicate, then right-click and pre-compose as our rocks comp. Inside this new comp, create an adjustment layer and duplicate it. On one, we're gonna use the curves effect and darken it down. Using the ellipse tool, we'll mask a large shape and set it to subtract. Now boost the feathering to give us a smooth fall off, darkening the outer edges of the frame. On the other adjustment layer, use a curves effect to lift the shadows, then mask around the center of the frame, once again with a high feather value. Now jump back into the main comp and you should see the difference, but you can always go back and adjust further if needed. To push closer to the Sandman look with the heavy glow or haze in the main comp, we're gonna duplicate the glow layer and move it to the top. We'll tweak some of the effects values and then using another duplicate, increasing the X size and colorizing it blue to give us a horizontal anamorphic flare from our highlights. Then just mask and feather the area that we want to keep. Lastly, we used another adjustment layer with some chromatic aberration, another adjustment layer to pop the contrast with the curves, enabled motion blur for the element rocks, then added a digital zoom, and we have this. 
For the close-up, we shot this footage of Justin, and in a new comp, we will once again key him using key light and the advanced spill suppressor. We'll drop the same background image beneath and scale it up, changing the placement until it feels right, and now using the camera lens blur effect to knock it out of focus. We do like to boost the roundness and diffraction fringe for better results, and if your shot is anamorphic, you could change the aspect ratio to get that oval bokeh shape. Highlight gain and threshold allow you to add highlights to to the brighter areas and control how much or little it affects the overall layer. We also change the color of Justin to match the background. But now copy these layers from the first comp and paste them into our new one. We're going to change some of the glow settings and adjust the mask of our lower glow and place it just beneath Justin. Now to add rocks into this shot as well, you could just use a copy of the pre-comp from the wide shot, scale up and add blur, or you can copy the light, camera, and element layers and paste here. Then just adjust the camera placement meant to match. Once again, either use the camera lens blur effect, or if you want to be more accurate, enable depth of field on the camera option and change the aperture and focus distance to select the level of blur and what area in Z space that you want that band of focus on. We then altered the curves effect slightly and changed some of the keyframes, such as position to have them starting below the frame and increase some of the other values on the end frame to add more motion. Justin's face was getting pretty obscured toward the end, so in the multi-object setting, we we went through the random seat option until we got a layout where his face was barely covered, giving us this. And obviously you can change these settings like keyframing his position in the wide to rise through the shot as if he's floating with the rocks, or you could change the background with another mid journey image or any image really. You just need to change any colors and light direction to match. But there you have our Sandman shot and a practical use for mid journey. I think we could take this even further, maybe get a few different mid journey images to Photoshop together our own own unique thing that works even better, sort of like a new way of doing matte paintings. I am really interested in ways that we could use this tool in smaller, even large roles in our pipeline like this. Obviously the images that we get from Mid Journey are still a bit rough, but it's getting better and better. And if you use it smart, there is plenty you could do with it right now. As always, if you aren't subscribed, consider doing that and hit the bell button to be notified when we put up new content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, 